Seeing Understandings and Misunderstandings was the title of a presentation I gave at the Teaching Factive Learning Conference back in 2021 at the University of Southern Denmark. During the presentation, I talked about uh, what a drawing-based student response system could be used for, how I showed some examples from a math course, and finally, we discussed briefly how to make good questions for such a course. As a teacher, you often want to get a sense of where your students are, how well do they understand what you're talking about at the moment or what we are working with in, in the class. One approach is to simply ask the students, uh, can anyone tell me about the uh, topic A and uh, then see what the, the students actually are, are able to, to answer there. Um, usually the students will indicate whether they want to apply to that uh, or answer this question by raising their hand or indicating uh, somehow and the teacher can then choose one or maybe two students that should answer the question and you can go on from, from there. So to look at this uh, uh, in, in a suitable structure, um, the teacher poses a question and um, then the one of the students make an answer that can be a quite rich answer or detailed answer and the teacher then has the option of adjusting the course of the class uh, based on whatever input was gained from, from the answer. The disadvantage of the approach shown here is that uh, if it's the last clutch, you only have time to actually get input from one or maybe two students. So you will be limited in the coverage of the class. Uh, here. To cover the entire class, you could opt for multiple choice questions, uh, which are struct questions where you list a number of uh, options. Uh, please choose A, B, C, or D. And then the students can vote or select the option they uh, find uh, most um, appealing to them. And it is then possible to go on from, from there. To structure this uh, in this interaction diagram, the teacher poses a question, the student each chooses uh, whatever uh, response they think is the, the most uh, likely. And the teacher then obtains some kind of summarized uh, a summary of, of all the student responses, usually some kind of count or percentage um, that choose each of the, the four outcomes. Based on that, the uh, teaching can then be adjusted uh, onwards. I think we can do much better than either of uh, these two, at least in, in some uh, cases. So what I would like to suggest here is a student response system based on images or drawings instead of uh, multiple choice questions and, and so on. So imagine a teacher posing this question to the students, please draw the function y equals 3 minus x, and also providing the students with a piece of uh, graphing paper on which the, the function should be drawn. Then each student can draw whatever they think is the right uh, uh, function, uh, given um, this equation. And all the pieces of graph paper can be uh, put back and the teacher can get us uh, overview of, of what is going on here. But this can also be done um, using an electronic uh, system. And this is what we're going into here. So the structure would be both to provide some kind of question, but also a template, in this case, the, the graphing paper or the coordinate system to the students, which then each drew their own uh, answer that will be summarized for the teacher that can then provide some feedback for the student or for the class and adjust whatever needs to be adjusted. So let's look into a few examples from a math course on, on this uh, or where this has been uh, utilized. The first example is to look at these uh, trigonometric uh, equations sine of theta equals x, cosine of theta equals x, tangent of uh, theta equals x and so on. And these expressions should be matched with a with a suitable triangle, uh, the free of the free triangle that I have been shown over here. And um, I don't want to discuss that much uh, trigonometry, but the correct matching will be uh, be this. 
And if we compare with uh, the uh, answers from the students, um, it seems uh, very similar. What we can see is that most of the students actually indicated the, the correct uh, relationships between uh, expressions and triangles, and a few one actually uh, found um, or indicated uh, there were some um, bad connections between these two. Um, but it provided me with an overview of the class that, okay, most of the class actually understood what this was about. A different task was simply to uh, provide the equation of uh, two different lines. In this case, uh, y equals 0 0.5 times x minus 1 and y equals minus x divided by 4 plus 2. And then see, okay, are the students able, able of actually drawing these uh, two lines in, in the same coordinate system? And most of the students were, and I got the following response back. We can see that a few students um, having some kind of issue on the figuring out the slope for some of the equations. Um, apart from that, I actually think it, it went out uh, quite well. Some students also had time to write with their tablets, hey, hey or whatever could, could show up here. Um, a different uh, task that we actually used uh, a few times during the semester was uh, the one here where we had a, a line and then I asked the students to actually draw uh, or sketch the derivative of the, um, not the line, but the function uh, slow, shown in uh, blue here. And after having done that a few times, we uh, ended up having uh, put some words in this uh, multiple times and say it would be really nice to start out by locating maxima and minima because uh, at these points, the uh, slope of the function will be uh, zero. And then we could look at uh, other pieces of the function to figure out what will be the sign here. And it, to me, it indicates that this uh, is a slightly steeper than uh, a slope of, of minus one. So now we have uh, three points that we could uh, try to connect and see, okay, it might, it should uh, possible appear more or less like this uh, for the slope of this function or the derivative of this function. And the students, most of the students do the same thing, whereas one or two students actually uh, have a positive, indicate a positive slope um, in the middle ground here. And based on that, we can take a discussion, okay, what is the definition of the slope actually, and, and what should this have been, and, and so on. Finally, in this class, we talked about relations between different topics, and I provided them with a list uh, of uh, topics and asked them to indicate relations between, uh, for instance, uh, complex numbers and uh, whatever they thought they were related to, in this case, uh, trigonometry. And um, I put the entire class of, of doing this and we got this uh, connection uh, shown over here, where they indicate that limits, differentiation and integration are very tightly coupled. Um, and similar with uh, complex numbers and trigonometry also seems to be uh, uh, well related to each other. So this provides me with an overview of, okay, how do they perceive that different things are connected to each other and so on. So how to write good questions for, for this? Well, um, let's take an example where we do not consider this and simply ask the students to draw a house. And um, if we provide no other uh, scaffolding for the students than just a blank piece of paper, then the house can be placed in all possible locations. Uh, it can be in 2D, 3D, uh, and sizes and structures and, and so on. And that can be really hard to decipher, especially if you not only have uh, three images on top of each other as shown here, but we are closer to maybe uh, 20 or 50 or 100 students uh, that have provided input simultaneously. So some kind of template is actually needed here. One example could be this from an optical uh, question uh, or a question relating to optics and physics, where I want to trace the path of light from A to B. It should be uh, something like this if I were able to draw straight lines, uh, a straight line from A to an intersection point here, 
and then from the intersection point down to, to B. Um, and because uh, index, index of the fraction uh, is lower in air than in water, uh, then the distance in air will be a bit higher than the, the one in water to minimize the time uh, travel distance from A to B. This was one example of, of a, a question where you should actually draw something. Um, and there are a few different other types of questions. I think of them as locate, match, place, and draw something um, here. So the simplest question is to ask the students to draw where a certain property is present in whatever is shown. Here I provided them with a black uh, line drawing or in, in this example it's uh, everything in, bl is black. in black is what was provided to the students and the students then responded by drawing. Uh, the intended student response will be the thing drawn in red on, on top of the, the black image. Um, in this case, we have a list of different uh, mathematical expressions that should be matched with a set of uh, properties of these expressions, other functions, even, odd, or neither of, of these two. Um, this can help simplify uh, some expressions um, if you know these uh, properties. Good. We can also look into how to place elements uh, on a number line. So if you have different expressions, for instance, the log of one, where should that be placed? That should be exactly zero, for instance. What about the square root of 10? That's slightly less, uh, slightly more than three and, and so on to, to see, okay, can the students place this uh, in on a suitable location on this uh, number line? And finally, the motivating example that I started out with to sketch uh, a certain uh, function and see okay where are, are where are the lines or where are the path of a function uh, placed in, in a coordinate system like this. When using this system in uh, practice uh, the students often ask the, the teacher to actually see the let the teacher see them see the shared canvas where all the joint uh, drawings have been uh, added. Um, and that actually provides the, the students with a good overview of, okay, how well have I understood the material, but also how well has the rest of the class understood the material um, of the question. And they are very keen on, on getting that information. We can go on with a, a few more questions on how that I have used for the system. In this case, it's about uh, diluting a mixture first initially in beaker one uh, by pouring pure water in, and in beaker two, there is also pure water initially. And then the question is okay, how does the amount of material in beaker two uh, change over time? And we could ask the students to actually draw this. And the right answer is something like this where it initially it starts, goes on to a maximum, and then uh, the case uh, afterwards um, goes down uh, exponentially. If when the students are asked to, asked to draw this, they typically end up uh, showing something like this, um, where some students are very close to the right solution, whereas others draw something that uh, tend to be quite far away from uh, from the true uh, value, and this can lead to some very nice discussions on okay. What have we done, and uh, why uh, would anyone uh, try to draw this? Um, the system as built here, it's not revealing the uh, identity of whoever has drawn anything on, on the lines here, so it's anonymous. So usually I ask in the class, okay, can anyone explain me what, what someone might have thought when drawing the lines as indicated up here? And then say, okay, if we uh, go back, they hadn't observed that uh, we actually let water out of the second beaker uh, to maintain a fixed volume. And therefore, they just thought that everything that left the first container would end up in, in the second. So that was uh, actually a quite nice response to this one. So we can get, this usually sparks a lot of uh, discussion afterwards on, okay, how do we actually interpret the question and what 
have we paid attention to and so on and and i think that's very helpful in in teaching does it only work in math courses uh no i think it will actually work in any course that depend on visual models um, and how to deal with uh, many students um, there's actually an option of, of grouping answers by similarity so imagine you have these uh, six answers from from students and you can ask the system to group them in uh, free clusters then it'll see if it can find free grouping uh, free different groups with where the members of the groups are as similar as possible and then uh, put them uh, in according to that so in this case we can see that we have three uh, drawings where lines have a positive slope, one with a negative slope, and, and two with more or less a, a zero slope. The project duration of this was the initial implementation testing and so on was back in 2019 and now we are in 2022 and um, I have presented it uh, multiple times and uh, are looking for uses of, of the system. So what we gone through is a student response system uh, was described that is based on drawings. We talked about the importance of actually having templates for the system and it can be relevant to using courses with uh, visual models. If you have uh, any ideas for new features, want to test it out and so on, please send me a mail on this uh, email address hemi at mmmi.sdudk. Have a nice day.